What's going on guys? So this is part two of a multi-part video series where I go over my workflow of how to create diagrams, presentations, fabrication, and construction drawings all from a single 3D model. The reason why I use this workflow is because it allows me to skip any 2D drawing where a lot of time is spent having to later update and synchronize changes across an entire drawing set. All right, let's do this. The first thing you wanna do is create uh, a layer that I typically called anno or annotation uh, where we can put a lot of this in. I'm gonna first create a layer called sheet and I'll activate that as the current layer. And the next thing we're gonna do immediately is we're just gonna completely ignore this bottom row here where all of our sheets typically go. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click our layers pane and we're instead gonna make sure that layouts is enabled. That will give us this opportunity. And then what we can do is we can click new layout. We can then name the new layout and we can set the size to the new layout. So I'm gonna pick landscape 11 by 17, that looks good. And it's gonna give us something like this. Now we're on layout A50. And if you look at the properties, when we select this outer window, you're going to see that the layer is in fact sheets. So one of the first things you might notice is this looks pretty ugly. Um, so let's fix that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna double click anywhere in this pane and you'll see it becomes bold. And then we can uh, change our views. You can either do it, uh, you can either do it in the set view here and uh, you know, do an isometric, for instance, if you wanna start doing perspectives uh, or anything like that, or you can just, do one of my tricks in one of my previous videos where we're able to press control and shift and that can kind of take you in and out of views uh, as you like it. So uh, now that we have it in an elevation, let's make it look better. You can set whatever view mode you like. I even have one that'll show that when I'm in an active viewport, that'll just make it a bit easier for me to tell what's going on. And then I'm gonna click out of it. Uh, the second thing that we're gonna wanna do is set a scale. So we can just highlight this and you'll see under properties, there's a number of different uh, tabs we can go to. And here is the, um, Here's under the settings where we can set the scale of the viewport. So we can do like one to one, let's say, and it'll be super zoomed in. We can do one to 16, which is three quarters of an inch to a foot. Uh, I'm working in inches, by the way. And then again, we can just lock that view. So now if we double click into this view and we try to scroll around or anything, nothing happens. Um, so now it's locked. And now we have a, we can know for certain that our, our model is in fact one to 16. Maybe we don't want to have these two, two foot markers in our drawing. So what we can do is I have a current layer, I have a layer specifically for these, uh, for these markers. And what we can do is there's actually regular display mode and then there's print display mode. So if we do it here, while we're in the viewport, it'll turn it off only in that view. So if we actually go back to our uh, perspective view, you see they're still on, but then if we go back to our view here, it's set by the specific viewport. So we could actually have it two viewports, one beside each other, and they can both be displaying the same view with different things. Now on that note, uh, what we can also do is we can double click and this is a visor here. And so what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna do set object display mode, which is again from another video I have in my channel and I'll do mode and I can do, for instance, um, a transparent view. So you can start to assign different views to different, uh, different elements. Okay, so now that we have our boat set up, now we have our sheet set up, we're gonna wanna go back into our perspective view and set a cut plane through the middle of the boat. So let's go back into perspective or into our model environment. Then we're gonna type clipping plane I'm actually gonna create, uh, let's just create a new layer called CP clipping plane. Clipping plane here. Let's rotate it 90 degrees, align bottom. There we go. Now we're cut right down the middle of the boat. If we go back into our view though, you'll see we actually aren't cutting through our boat yet. The reason why is because we need to first assign that clipping plane to this view. So if you right click, select the object and say enable clipping plane. You can see that right there. It's now cutting straight through the model. So that's good because that means it won't necessarily, you know, you can imagine that this clipping pin would otherwise be cutting through these models as well. And we can do that if we want to. Again, if we just select it, select the object, and then click enable clipping plane. We could also do disable clipping plane to disable it. And this is really good because it's how you can control different displays for different views. Okay, so this might be groundbreaking, but you can assign line weights to 3D objects. And we're gonna do that now. So let me just quickly show you what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna type in print display. And we're just gonna turn this on, state on, okay? And look, right away, bam, like there's just line weights. How amazing is that on 3D objects? I can't believe this isn't like a default option or something. Um, but what you can do now is you can actually assign different line weights to different objects. So for instance, in this case, maybe I want to really uh, highlight the subframe, the substructure. So I could, you know, like this might be a lot, but you can kind of get the idea is that you can assign different line weights um, to different elements. Maybe I want the, uh, the shell or the hull of the boat to, uh, to have a different size, right? So we can do this. Again, this can be really thick, but you, you kind of get the sense because we can actually start to assign line weights to different 3D objects. Um, just mind blowing. 
<laughs> it's mind blowing that that's not like a common thing. Okay, but it gets better. Now watch this. I might be on the clipping plane layer and I wanna figure out what layer this is that has such a thick line weight. I might wanna change it. I can just double click to enter into the viewport like I did just there. I can press, I can type the command set layer to object and then click the object and then watch my layers. Bam, just like that. Now I know that's subframe. I can jump out, I can go back, and I can set this to something a little thinner. That's how you do it. Okay, and if you want to be like me, you can just set that to a hotkey, click a, click a piece of geometry, you figure out what layer that's a part of, then you can just assign that a new line weight, just like that. Suddenly you have a much, much faster way of working, and this is all still bound to the same geometry that's doing the same thing. And again, we can disable the, clip, the clipping plane here, and it still is visible and cut through here. Okay, so what are we missing? We need to add some dimensions. So there's two ways we can do this. We can do this in the 2D space or in the 3D space. What I'm gonna do, let's just start with 2D. I have a dim layer activated. I'm just gonna dim aligned, right? Let's see what the distance is between these two. Okay, 24, 24 inches. Now, that's fine. And that will only be visible in this view. The other option to do it in 3D. So we'll double click into the view, go to dim aligned, click here, click here, and click here, let's say. First of all, it's a lot tinier, but it's giving you 24. And when you go over here, you'll see this is actually a 3D dimension. And you can do this with any you know, angle, whatever you want. We can change our annotation style so it makes more sense and it's much more visible by changing the following settings. And bada bing, bada boom. We now have dimensions, feet and inches, and we have them both in 2D and 3D. And these are, these are good in different cases. Uh, if we're just doing a section cut or something, you can just do the 2D, and so in that case, I'm just gonna get rid of this one, but play around with the 3D uh, dimensions too, especially if you wanna show dimensions in two viewports. So if we wanna show this in another viewport, here's the major difference, is now we have a procedural sort of dynamic element here that's synchronized between views, whereas the two-dimensional one is only on the one. So that's really the difference between the 2D and the 3D. It depends if you wanna have your views and dimensions synchronized across multiple drawings. Okay, the last thing we should mention is talking about how to apply hatches. So there's two ways. For simple flat objects like this little thing over here, we can just do deep face border, we can select it, we can turn that into lines, we can type hatch, and then we can do this, bada bing, bada boom. Okay? That's on a hatch layer. You can turn the hatches on or off if you want to, depending on what view you're in. But now, this is what makes it kind of interesting. If we have, let's say, this piece right here. This is a curved piece. This is gonna be pretty hard to hatch. Um, so here's an alternative. All right, we're gonna grab this texture. This can be anything. You can make your own image. You could take the hatches that already exist. We can just type this, call this lines. Okay, so we obviously can't hatch this. So what are we gonna do? So let's just click it, go to the internet, get an image that you want. We're gonna just create a new layer, custom. Scroll to the bottom. You'll see where it says color. We're gonna assign an image to it. Let's call it thick line. We'll have it here. That looks pretty bad. What we'll do We'll assign a box mapping to it. So just go over here, type apply box mapping, click, one meter, one meter, one meter, yes, one. Then it'll have this assignment. You can then just under the texture mapping here, show mapping. You can make it bigger or smaller. You can change the base point by just moving this around. You can rotate it if you want, just like a hatch, okay? Now we have this. In display mode, we can go back over here. You see, it might not show the texture depending on what display mode you're using. If that's the case, just select it, type deep face border, click, there you go. Now we can print it, and the rest is history. Yeah, you can basically do this whatever you want. Here's my boat. Yeah, and just like that, you're super powerful. You can make anything a texture, you can make anything a hatch pattern. Hatches are kind of obsolete, just use image textures. And just like that, you're now working with image textures like you're actually using a computer as opposed to drawing by hand. Whoa! Okay, last thing we need to do is print it. Let's print it. Press print. Control P. Run a PDF. Size, 1 by 17. Resolution, 600 dots prints if you want. 300 is fine too. I'm gonna do 600 because it's one image. Okay. Scroll down. Everything else should be good. Bang, 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 bang. Line width, one, default line width, 0 0.13. Play with these to see how it looks when you print it. Go, print, all right, fast. Bing, 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 bing. Bam, bam, test three, go. Would you look at that image? We have a little bit of everything here. We have a little bit of everything. Now, the only caveat to all this is that this is always going to be an image. This will not be a vector drawing. Keep that in mind. So once you're out of this viewport, 
There's no editing vector lines. It's all 3D up until the very end. You can't take this into Illustrator. You can only do this in Photoshop or back into Rhino. Here you are. We have a ton of different ways of making display modes, different hatches, different ways of thinking about things that finally uses 3D drawings and computer graphics to do what computer graphics are good at. And to do what computers are good at, which is to make our lives easier. Thank you!